I'm Liz Larson with The Art of Frosting, and I'm here today with Leah Larson from Leah's Crazy Cake Lab. And today we are working on anger from the Inside Out movie. So this cake was a lot of fun. Leah is a resident sculptress. So I put the challenge to her to see if she could figure out how to build this little cake. And she ended up doing a great job. So we have a lot to show you, so let's get started. For the candy melt flames, I'm going to show you the basic design. So I just want to show you, you know, a, a little design that you can do for that. And then I'm just going to freehand and show you how we incorporated the yellow in it. So you want to make a wider base on the bottom so that when you stick it in the cake, it'll stay. And so I just outlined the outside and then I'm going to put the yellow inside. And then I'm going to use this little tool. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm not sure what it is, but you could just use a toothpick or anything with a sharp end so that you can mix this in. And voila, you have a candy melt flame. So you want to make different sizes and then when you're done, put them in the fridge and let them harden while we do the rest of the cake. So we're starting to build the cake. We actually made a quarter sheet with um, a two inch thick pan and we overfilled just a little so we'd have nice tall layers. We also made a nine inch square just to be sure that we'd have enough cake. Since Leah's doing this for the first time, we're not really sure how tall he's gonna need to be. So that's what we're going to start out with. So she's got her quarter cut in half, and then she's going to cut it again lengthwise. So we have four equal pieces. Now our little anger guy, he's kind of a little rectangle, kind of a fat little rectangle. So that's basically what we're going for. So I'm just going to start stacking. Um, I'm not going to split and fill. I'm just going to put the icing in between each of the layers. I want to point out that Leah is also reversing the layers. So you ha won't have two outsides on the outside, you have an inside and an outside. It helps with it being level because the center of the cake inevitably has a little bit of a taller edge. So we're going to reverse and that'll help a lot with stability. So we're going to use some really thin bamboo skewers. You guys have seen us use these before. Our cake is about 8 inches tall and our skewers are 12. So we definitely need to cut them down. So Leah's going to skewer four corners of the cake just to be sure that it will stand up. This will give the corners stability, make sure the cake cannot fall over. Now we haven't put a lot of filling in this and I really recommend putting a light filling or something with pudding, not heavy fruit flowers. You don't want to weight this cake down. So um, what do you think, are we going to, do you want to creme ice this or put a full layer of white icing underneath, what do you think? Yeah, I think we should crumb ice it so that we can draw the outline of where we want all of his body parts to go and all that. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. So, it sounds like we're just going to put a light crumb ice on this. It's just a light coat of icing to keep the crumbs down, thus the name crumb ice, and not a full layer. So, we don't actually need our um, quick icer for this one. So, Lee is using a gardening tool. Um, it's just a clipper. You want to make sure that yours is just for cake decorating or cooking, not for the garden, and for cake decorating. What? Really? Yeah. Really. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> so really the only cake sculpting we're going to do today is just cut off the edge here because the back of him is a little slanted. So I'm just going to diagonally cut the back of this off. And that's it! Yay! So I'm going to add extra icing on the top for his forehead and his eyebrows. And so you can see that this part is slanted. This is the back. And I'm just going to add a couple of extra layers. And his eyebrows are going to be uneven. 
like he's raising one eyebrow, so it doesn't have to be super, super even. And then I'm just going to add this on the top for when I smooth it out. And you just grab a, a bench knife and you smooth it out. And remember, this is just crumb icing, so it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just making an outline for when we put the other colors on. And then the last thing that I'm adding is a little notch in the middle of his forehead like that. And then we're going to sculpt from there. So he has different sections. He has his head and his shirt and his pants. Um, so what I'm going to do is just mark out where those things go. Um, we're going to use about three inches for the pants, three inches for the head, and then two inches for the shirt. And then I'm going to use my cake knife and make sure it's straight. Just mark the pants out and mark the shirt out. His shirt actually dips down a little bit. So I'm just going to use this to mark out the little dip in his shirt. So we're going to start now putting the pants on. Now Leah said that she wants to put the pants on first because she doesn't want the top of the cake to be top heavy with the red icing, which is really a smart move. So she's got a quick icer, our quick icing tip, our large one, and I mix the color. In the movie, his pants are kind of a gray, but they're also a little purple. So what I did was I mixed burgundy and a little bit of black. So basically, she's just going to put a layer of icing all the way around. Using the quick icer for this is a great idea because it allows it to be just one thin layer and you have a lot more control when you're sculpting after. The less work I have to do on the cake, the better. So I'm just going to use the quick icer and I'm going to do two swipes up one side. So I'm just going to do, I'm doing four swipes with my quick icer. And then I can just sculpt the middle and the crease in the pants. So I'm just going to sculpt in between his legs a little bit, make it a little more of a crease. So I'm just pushing in and pulling out to the side. And just smooth out the sides around the edges. You can see I already made one shoe. Um, it's just kind of the tiniest bit smaller than the width of his pants. And so I'm just using a number 12 figure piping tip. And I'm going to just measure out where how big his foot is. And then I'm just going to make it round. So what I did with this other side is I made the top right here a little bit higher and the bottom slanted. So I'm just using my handy dandy end of a Ziploc bag and making the sides smooth. And kind of just shaping so it looks the same size as the other foot because that's always important. And then you just clean around the edges with a paper towel and you've got his feet. Next we're going to do his cuffs on his pants. So I'm just using a um, an inch long basket weave tip. So I'm kind of going to do the same thing that I did with his pants. Um, I'm going to make the cuff go all the way to here and then I'm going to start again and go all the way to the corner. So it kind of keeps going with the crease in his pants. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side and then we'll smooth out what we need to. 
So I just did the cuff all the way around to the other side. I'm using a quick icer to put the red on in the shape that I want it to go. And I'm just making sure I'm sticking to the lines that I marked out before. So I'm just roughing in where I want his eyebrow to be raised and, and different parts of him that I need a little extra icing for. So I just added a layer there and then we're going to smooth it out later. So I'm going to use my small offset spatula to sculpt his face. And I'm going to keep my lines that I made for his shirt. And don't worry if you get anything here, you remember that you're going to put white icing there. So now I'm going to use my handy dandy end of a Ziploc bag and I'm going to smooth out his edges. And I'm going to keep his, I'm going to keep the top of his head pretty square right here, but the rest of it I'm going to round out around the sides. So I'm going to mark out his eyebrows and his eyes and his mouth. So I'm going to take out his eyes so that I can replace it with the white. And I'm just using my offset spatula and I'm carefully taking out where I've marked. Okay, so now I'm just going to fill in the eyes. And I'm just going to go around in a circle and fill in that part that I dug out. So his bottom teeth are smaller, so I'm going to start with his bottom teeth. I'm just going to make little bricks and they don't have to be even because his teeth aren't even. And then I'm going to do his bigger teeth. Okay, so you can see that I added his bottom lip with just a coupler and then I'm going to add the top lip and then we're just going to smooth. just doing his eyeballs now and you can see that I've, I don't know if you can see, but I have marked out the little circles where his eyes should go. He's a little cross-eyed. So uh, I've filled a bag with uh, brown color and I think I'm just going to do the outside like that. And now I'm just going to do the pupil in the middle. So we're moving on to the eyebrow. It's pretty square. And so I'm using a number 12 figure piping tip. Uh, just enough pressure for it to be the right size above his eyes. I'm just going to smooth this one edge just to blend it in. And do the same on the other side. And a couple dots of eye shine. So, it's my turn to get in here and decorate a little bit rather than just boss behind the scenes. I wasn't doing that. Actually, it's fun when Lee and I get to decorate together because we have two minds working on one project. Remember that this project is an experiment. Just like I tell you so often, all of these cakes are an experiment, even if you've done the design a hundred times. But this one's brand new. So behind the scenes, we're coaching each other to see how we can get the very best result. You basically just have to use the experience you have. In this case, we have two sets of experience to get the right look. So I'm going to be doing the shirt. And I want to use, at this point, a little movement on the cake. I want to touch it as few times as possible so that I'm not blending colors. The red is bright, this gray is dark, and 
they're going to want to spread into each other. So what I've got is a coupler without any tip. So I've got the big round edge. I'm going to use a big figure piping edge. And I'm going to come in and put his shirt on that way. So I decided I'm going to start in the middle just under his chin here. And my aim is, I don't know if it's going to work, is I'm going to continue my pressure and fill this in in one movement. I'm moving slowly and continuing my pressure and yeah, got it. So I'm going to do it the other way. Continuing, move slowly, continuing the pressure and got pretty close there too. Okay, so we're going to start on the side and I know already that I'm going to need to use two movements here. So I'm going to just come right down one side like this and right down the other. So I will need to smooth just a little in the middle, but not much because remember his arms are going to go here as well. I'm just going to smooth down the edge right here just in the center and that should give me just that little bit of coverage that I need. Now I want to add just a little line above a very light pressure. See I'm filling in there. That was perfect. And come around. So, I'm ready to put his arm in. I want it actually to be more towards the front than the middle. It actually just, um, we tested and actually looks a little better. So we want a little bell shape, just a small amount at the top, a little heavier here at the bottom, about the length of his pants here, and just a little bell shape. We'll go ahead and put his arm underneath of that and a cuff on. So we're just going to use our bag trick and just take the edges off that, smooth down the top. We want it to be a definite slope like that. One easy movement. And so we want the edge of his sleeve to angle up a little. I'm just going to take my handy dandy piece of uh, baggie and just come right under and create that angle. One or two movements, that's it. We don't want to overwork. So we need to decide where his fists are going to be. So I'm going to put it right about there. Now our torso is, is a little short actually. So um, his fists normally would be about the middle of his leg. So we are just going to come back in, use our figure piping skills, just slow circles. Let it build. Now his arm covers most of the outer edge of his sleeve. So you see I can just push my tip in and get a little more fullness. And then we're going to come down to about there. So after we've got our arm on, we want to just smooth uh, just a little. Remember, we're not going to rework. And up here, don't worry about blending because we still have to put a cuff. All right. So for the little fist, we're just going to create a C, kind of a C shape. Up, down, and back over. A nice C for his, sh for his fist. And then we want to come back in and smooth it in so it's attached and won't come off. So I've got my number 124 rose tip and I'm going to come back in and do his cuff. Now we want to make sure we attach and then just move gently across. And then next we want to do his little collar. Just want to make sure that we mark so we're a little bit even here and here. So we're just looking for a nice crisp edge to the collar here. Move up. And we're going to start to rotate so we thin it out on the edge. I'm quickly making the bag for the tie, so I'm just using a red, my red bag, and I'm just striping up the inside of it one stripe and then I'm filling the rest with glue. So I've got my striped bag and I'm just going to squeeze it all down and then squeeze it out until I get the right stripe. So that's pretty good. I'm going to make sure that the red is on the top here 
so that I can get the stripes. And so I'm just gonna do two stripes like this. And then what I wanna do is make a rectangular shape like that. And then I'm just gonna make the shape of the tie. All right, so I made the outline of the tie and then I'm just going to zigzag down over, over it. So we are at the end of this cake. And so all that's left to do is flames and glitter. So Leah's got the glitter. And we found this at a cake supply shop. It's actually called Disco Dust. Disco Dusk from a company called CK. So you can order that online. This is American Red. And so basically, we just want to get the glitter on the top. So I'm just taking a little bit of a pinch and you just want to go over the top and kind of keep it back as much as you can because you don't want it to get in his eyes and you don't want it to get in his shirt so we're just doing it on the top if you wanted to make him all glittery you could just do the red first and then completely glitter him before you do his face details and in the movie, they're all just a little glittery, a little shimmery. So the little addition of glitter, I think, is a lot of fun and adds to a little bit of the authenticity. So next, we're just going to come in with our smallest flames first. And we're just going to start sticking them in. Angle them forward just a tiny, tiny bit. Just have fun with this one because... It is flames and it's random. And he's super mad. So for the flames, if you're delivering this cake, you may want to put the flames in when you arrive. They're a little bit heavy depending on how stiff your icing is and you don't want them falling off. So that's one little tip that might help you out a lot. And there he is. So this was fun. It was a little challenging. So I wanna tell you that I'm here in LA with Leah. Normally I'm filming in Oregon and it is hot and humid. So a lot of you have emailed me about this problem in other countries where you have a lot of heat and humidity or in the South even of the United States. So here's some tips. Number one, work on a frozen cake. The cool from the cake will keep your icing cool. That's great. The other thing is, Keep your icing in the fridge until you're ready to use it. So any colors you've mixed, even the larger portions of your white that you need, keep them in the fridge until you're ready to use them. If you fill bags, keep them in the fridge until you're ready to use them. Other than that, this was really a lot of fun. Thanks to Leah's creativity in constructing this. I think it turned out perfect. I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. Remember, you can find me at The Art of Frosting on Facebook where decorators just like you are sharing their work from all around the world. You can find me at www.theartoffrosting.blogspot.com as well. And you can find a 10 lesson beginning cake decorating course at curious.com. So there's lots more to come. We'll see y'all again really soon.